All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Ruby, Ruby Volume, Volume 7, 7, Chapter 3. three. Okay, okay, yeah, we've got uh, a good good chapter ahead mm -hmm. of us here. We've got uh, a lot of things uh, brewing in Atlas. Yep. Uh, we've got Watts and Tyrion on the move. Uh huh. And we've got our, our crew, you with know. With a plan. Well, not only with a plan, but we're with new allies. We've yes. got Penny back. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, these Aesops. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Ironwood being very congenial yep yep um yeah and winter and all of them yeah, yeah uh, there is a little bit of a slight hiccup with uh ruby withholding ozpin related information right but we'll just have to wait and see what the overall yep. kind of scope of that is because in some ways it actually might be a little bit useful to have some cards on the table we'll, we'll see yeah. i wouldn't but be surprised if she ended up realizing okay yeah you know, clarifying later or something, you know, because she's like, all right, yeah, I can trust you now fully. Or, or like, like at that. what point, yeah, she can trickle back the information. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, to just keep things under a, a level amount of control. Otherwise, I do think, though, Ironwood would kind of be like, all right, Oscar, you're staying here now, you know, like, like, like well, yeah, regardless I mean, of what you want. We, you we, know? Well, we still need the training. That we yes. saw in the OP. That's true. Show, that's true. You know, and that's gonna that, be awesome. That, that's gonna be cool. And also the the outfit changes and stuff like that. All the, the yes, styles and stuff indeed. like that. And that, that could be pretty legit. Mm -hmm. Um I wanted to clarify from the previous episode, I must have been asleep at like a serious level during that reaction because I missed some serious stuff. I put it in the comments and the description of that video. But uh yeah. I completely missed what Ironwood's original plan was, so now I'm aware of what's going on. I'm also now aware of some things that I was missing regarding what Watts yeah, uh, I was is stuff, uh, what, 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 what is public too. information regarding Watts. Mm -hmm. And when I mean public, I mean, sorry, us as the audience. Right. One, Raven was able to spot him as a disgraced Atlesian scientist. Which is important. In volume five. So that yeah. is that is important, meaning that if Watts was seen on the cameras, he could be immediately sent for arrest, like, really yep. quickly. So hence his uh, scrutiny with, you know, being, you know, mm -hmm. able to, having to be careful here. And my original thought was that he was on the inside of Atlas, you know, kind of. Right. And uh -huh. now we know, no. No, he very much is not. No, that was yeah. revealed in volume five. He's definitely not. Yeah. In fact... Pietro Palandina, who is potentially connected and in the know with certain things, they're also uh, potentially on the thought that it is someone on the inside or, you know, someone with a very least certain knowledge of how things work on the inside. Right. So it might actually lend some uh, interesting uh, thoughts as to why they didn't update things in Mantle. Almost like they're sure. setting up Mantle to be the sacrifice of right. the battleground for not only the Grim. But any kind of interference, so it's like, yeah, hey, Watts, it, they could be trying to set you up for a trap. That, we, that, we don't they know. could be, and that would that would be awesome. One of the other things that I, I didn't think of, uh, mm -hmm. like I thought of it as soon as the the previous episode was over, is that one of the other things they can bring in as a point of moral conflict is mm -hmm. that if Atlas does go and help protect other countries from the Grim, at what point does that stop? Because because that's still like even though Grim, that's a that's a serious threat. Sure. It's still a whole bunch of military forces going in and probably saying, okay, this is how things are going to be done here. Yeah, it's volume you know. two. Right, but, right, but exactly. The world, basically. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. So, so that'll be a thing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, y'all, chapter three. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. I really love the uh, the the updated outfit specifically for uh, for, for, for Yang and, and Weiss, but the one that I'm actually the most like interested in how much different they're actually going to go in on it is Ruby's. Oh yeah. Because every time I look at Ruby's like new kind of look. I realize that there's there's more like very key subtle differences, but one of the big ones is actually the hair is surprisingly different. Like really, if you go and look really closely at it, there's a lot that's because like Blake just gets a, a straight up haircut. Like, oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Whereas Ruby's it cuts off a lot of the sides, um, so it's a lot more on the top. So when she's moving really fast, if anything, it's going to be like. 
you know, way more, way more dramatic of movement. That is another thing. Yeah. Someone being dumb enough to throw a rock at a hologram, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but on a, on another point, when they throw the rock at the hologram, it seems, so you can kind of see how it's a little bit different, right? Yep. <laughs> it's more bangs than, right. than anything else. But, Shorter in the uh, back. You see uh, Weiss's dad kind of in the silhouette after Ironwood kind oh. of vanishes. So almost like oh boy. citizens overturn. Yeah. Uh, gather round. Our mission today is to secure the launch site for the Amity Communications Tower. Oh, the designated nice. area is an abandoned dust mine. Here we go. Since its closure, the Grim have moved in. The good news is all that untouched dust is still down there, too. Science team says they'll need it for the first phase of their launch. Okay. Apologies for the mess and for holding on to your hey. weapons for so long. Nice. The upgrades you requested were, uh, well, they were more than I anticipated. <laughs> Aha! Okay. So he's going to be the one doing that. already hard at work clearing out the surrounding tundra. But Recon has identified a powerful geist that's managed to evade destruction. Oh, and all right. Several lives. After we increased our numbers, the geist was smart enough to retreat into the mine itself, meaning it's cool. old and extremely dangerous. Good old fashioned this dungeon. This is our target. Nice. New weapons and armor so an ice golem. Requested. But I also took the liberty of reviewing your combat footage from the Vital Festival Tournament. Oh. There's some additional enhancements I'd like to suggest. Oh. oh but for now, uh, these should serve you well enough. The mine okay. was a labyrinth back in the day. Sweet. Cool. There's all sorts of tunnels and chambers the guys can move between. So if we're going to kill this thing, we'll have to split up and corner it. Uh, so come at it from both ends, basically. General Ironwood says you've seen your nice. fair share of combat. I trust that man with my uh -huh. life. People getting yeah, the haircuts yeah, are like, hmm, it yeah. is a little I'm long. trusting you all, too. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Let's talk real quick. I mean, we already know what they're going to talk about, essentially, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> and, and Yang with the shades. Yeah. Landing strategy. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> It's been too long since we've seen them do this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes! <laughs> okay, best go okay. right there. Oh, oh nice, wow. nice. Wow. That's legit, yeah. Okay. She's gonna... I thought she was gonna, like, impact, you know? Yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> Crater into the ground. Right. Three-point landing. Okay, we can see their weapons, all right. Okay, and the rest are going to the other side, gotcha. The visuals really are just so good. Yep. All right, so Juniper's uh, going- Except with... that visual. Hey, hey, you know what, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot, I'm gonna give it a shot, maybe. Oh! oh. All right, all right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I dig it, John, all right. Perhaps you kids won't get yourselves killed after all. <laughs> She meant that as a compliment. <laughs> uh, that'll take some getting this is used Alpha to. Squad. LZ's clear. Proceeding on foot. You've all okay. got fancy new scrolls, so don't forget to use them. Keep your eyes and ears open. Nice. I want an update if you encounter the target. Oh, Alpha nice. Out. Huh? Uh, sorry. Ha, Just ha. not used to the new hair yet. <laughs> is it bad? No, no, ha, ha. it's good. Great, even. And I did not sign up to be a babysitter. <laughs> yeah, well, the rest of us babysit you all the time. <laughs> I am pouty dog, and I must pout. <laughs> yeah. Now, maybe this is just me, and it feels weird saying this, but it looks like they made Blake's bust bigger. <laughs> it's probably the outfit. It's probably okay. the outfit. It's freezing out here. Without heating or a projected aura, the cold of Solitas can kill you in a matter of hours. I suddenly don't feel as bad about leaving Oscar behind. Can we talk about that again? What about it? We're really not going to tell Ironwood what happened to us? This what we is learned true. about Jin? Yeah. About Salem? We are. We will. 
But you saw how things looked when we flew into Atlas. The General's heart seems to be in the right place, but that doesn't mean we should trust him yet. We need to play along for a while before we make any major decisions. Okay. How did Oscar feel about that? Yeah. Uh, probably shouldn't keep running around with an ancient relic on a keychain. Ha! <laughs> but... I know you'll keep it safe in Atlas. Ruby, uh, hiding things from Ironwood. Doesn't mm. that feel like what Ozpin did to us? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Good. Good. That's... Bring that up. Yeah. Bring that up. Yep. Gotta say, I'm still not really used to working with other huntsmen in the field. But you were on a team before, weren't you? Oh! A bringing this up. Ago. I've just found working alone tends to be for the best. Well, I think that's a shame. I thought that was going to be him that slipped. Alpha yeah. gear. Give me an update. The connecting ice tunnels seem clear. We should be approaching the actual mm -hmm. mine any minute now. This is beautiful. This is so exciting. Oh, yeah. It feels like we're an actual huntsman team. <laughs> I am... Um... Like oh. what you did with your outfit, Ren. Yeah. We should probably stay focused on the mission. Oh, Ren! Whoa! Come on! Okay. I like your outfit too. <laughs> Bravo, <Jimmy. laughs> it's a bit of a snag. Oh like my god, so awkward. Not sure if it's recent or was caused by the original accident. Either okay. way, we'll have to do a little problem solving. Understood. Let us know if you need anything. Oh, you okay? Blake, yeah. I just realized where we are. Yeah. This mine was closed after Ilya. an explosion. Ilya's parents, I remember yeah. this disaster. Yep. Or rather, I remember how furious it made my father. I wish I could take back the years of pain my family has caused the Faunus, and all of my complacency in it. This society is set up for Faunus to be at the bottom, and humans are willing participants. They benefit from doing nothing to help us. But there are still those who actively abuse us. Anyway, I didn't come over here looking to solve systemic societal issues. Harriet found a gap in the rubble we think one of you could fit through. I <laughs> wow. someone with a knack for seeing in the dark. Uh, oh, of yeah. course. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. That was that was wow. very that was very pointed and very uh, and pointed was, was meta nice. and funny. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a look around. Oh yeah, so such a small Is there opening. Any dust in the immediate area? Mine cards. Making so them feel useful. Debris. Yeah. No dust though. Great, then it should be safe to blast our way through. Okay. Heading for oh, right. oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice. Let's Blake stand back. Oh, cybernetics, let's go. Alright. So we found the geist. Here we go. Don't let it get away! Huh? Oh right, right from the trailer. Oh yeah. Ew. Look at these things. Oh no. Oh yeah. No. That's like some divinity, like uh -huh. void woken, void woken stuff. stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. Or the tunnelers from uh, from Dune. Is that from Dune or is that That's uh? Disgusting. Oh no, I didn't watch that movie. I haven't even looked, but but yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Dungeon crawling, limited space. Monsters with actually tough amount of hit points. Oh, ooh, delayed, yeah. delayed incendiary explosives. Oh yeah. Okay. More mobility with the scythe. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, what can you do, buddy? Oh, oh it's a saw. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's got a, a chainsaw that can be thrown and. Okay. okay. What? What? Whoa! Whoa! No way! What? What did he just do? No way! That's. Let's pick up the pace. At lowest, it's hold the monster. At highest, he's got a localized like like stop yeah. time Contact. thing. That's that's ridiculously good. Oh! Oh! Cool. Nice. Okay. Some kind of aura projected. Extensions, okay. All right. Oh my god, this combat is so legit. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> oh. A very. She looks at Ren first. like. Notice. Yeah. Well, that's just kind of our style. <laughs> kind of our style. <laughs> I will say though, the hair does shoot, suit Jean's disaster style. Whoa. Oh. Oh. 
Nice. Lightning okay. kind of energy this speed. This makes you super fast, just like me. Very cool. Though, based on your reaction time, I'd say I'm a little faster. This is Alpha. We've wow. engaged the target. Yeah. All squads, head towards our position. Okay, what do you got? Oh, a fishing line! Let's get a fishing line! This is some gun! Yep, yep, here we go. So now it animates the golem. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's feeling basically cornered. Right. But it's in- Visuals are good! Yeah, yeah, all this stuff Oh, moving. exposed dust. Oh, it's got dust in its body now. Oh. Stop. Yeah, yeah! Crap! Oh. Darn it. Target escaped. Last scene headed east. Oh, it was using Thanks that to collapse the... That could have been bad. I wouldn't thank me. Mm -hmm. My semblance brings misfortune. <laughs> Sometimes I can't keep it under control. That's so? Okay. Wait. Well, hey. Don't beat yourself up about it. Nice. Oh. My semblance is good fortune. Wait, you, what? Huh? Wait, what? Wait, Charlie. Bravo. Okay. Oh, now, so the so here's the, the thing. The there's I won't be far behind. There's design choices and there's intentionally setting up the shippers. <laughs> hey, 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 you know what? Crow has had a pretty messed up life. Like this is true. And oh, wait. Oh, it's nice. hot in here? Everyone use caution. This room is highly active with dust energy. Well, the dust may be hot. In the launch site. And vaporize us. <laughs> How is that always second with you? I thought the target was supposed to be in here. <gasps> oh, it is. Yeah. There it is. Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, boss okay. battle room. Here okay. we go. Let's I, do this. Added dust to its body? Yeah. How are we supposed to go? We got our support character with his CC and yep. tentacle powers, basically. Yep. Tentacle powers, yep. Fine! Nice! Whoa! So now we're seeing abilities being used in tandem. Yeah. I love that this is basically like, um, it, like, it, it reminds me of the, the volume Ooh. one fights, you know, where it's yeah. just, okay, yeah, big, big creature, very well, like, Designed as far as visuals and everything, and and people working in conjunction with each other. <laughs> oh my know. god! Oh yeah! Oh that my was god! Awesome. Wow! So then they can actually tear it apart, right? Without actually having the whole place explode. And super speed, super speed. Oh, oh nice! You guys do without. Good fortune! Wow. Hey, Crow, maybe you should hang back a bit. All right, some little, yeah, some some casual, some casual flirting, you know, yeah, no yeah. big deal, no big I deal. I gotta say though, good luck as a semblance that is, oh yeah, so lucky. ridiculously lucky, busted. yeah. But so is so is misfortune in a way as well. Sure. Oh, it's a clover. Oh, I nice. get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. No way. <laughs> I mean, if he's lucky, he's lucky. Yeah. Oh my God! Just. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! This is this is what a they team of him, like, five the pro brightest. huntsmen kind of kind of skill can do. Uh huh. Oh, let me guess. They missed one, and then Ruby gets it. Here. Jeez! That oh, that just looks so yep, cool. Ruby got yeah. it. Ruby got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, the visuals. Wow! Like Someone's was like mine. It. Is? I've seen other speed summonses before. That that was different. Yeah. I think there's more going on than you think. Nice, Wait nice, she good. Sees what she could do with her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky catch, huh? Hmm. No, I chalked that one up to talent. Yeah. Atlas Control. This is Clover. Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. That's They're great. doing all these little fun things in the background yeah. now. Yeah. It's so good. Ah, <laughs> oh, this guy. Huh? 
Dead. Dead. You're in a horror movie now. <laughs> Take us to yep. your leader. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Of course it's Tyrion. Me? Oh, well, I'm someone just like you. Someone who wants to mix things up around here. His eyes just changed color. Well, yeah, that's when he's going to use his, uh, his semblance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, well, we have our dungeon crawl. We had amazing team combat. Yes, that was that was fantastic. With like incredible choreography. All right, like, we've got all the names there, I think, of the Aesops. Awesome. Like, that seems like the kind of thing that there's no way they could keep this level of visual quality up throughout the rest of the season, Oh, right? shut like, up. Yes, they like, could. Blah. Yes, they I could. I mean, if they do, awesome. Yeah, of course, but Jacob. Like, it's this was so good. It's 2019. Do you know how many people work on Bruce on yeah, Ruby? Yeah, a lot. A lot of people. A lot. Look at all these people. Yeah. Look yep. at all those people. Most of those were animators. Wow. Oh my God, what an episode. All right, okay. that's uh, Ruby Volume 7, Chapter 3, and we yep. got some serious, this was serious visuals. Really good. Oh really my God, good. yeah. Like, yeah. We get to wow. see uh, the full teams of, of Ruby and Juniper having, you know, a throwdown mm -hmm. with some grim, but even better, we get to see these Aesops getting the the full kind of introduction as to Ruby right. style, what they are, uh -huh. who they are, what yep. they can do, mm -hmm. and what they can do together. Like everything about this show has always been based around like teams, you know, having strength. Even the villains are in little teams, you this know, is sometimes. True. This is but true. But I think it's been a while since we've seen like non Ruby Juniper teams being showcased in combat. In a right. cool way, mm -hmm. in a long time. So yeah, like, just major props, major props out yeah. the gate for this, that. This really did feel like, um, like the you know back in back in volume one with the mm -hmm. the, the the Death Stalker and the Nevermore, yeah. And but just with the budget and and the the well, visual the, the, this of, effort put in of like right. a bunch of people, a right, lot exactly. of people working yeah. on this, yeah. like. <sighs> It it, so. it is pretty mind blowing because because I feel like even even when they they had fights like that were kind of similar to this bef before in previous volumes mm -hmm. you know it was something where either there were parts of the visuals that didn't quite fit you know it was still mm -hmm. it was still like they were still finding their groove and stuff you know usually with right. The choreography right um, but then also because maybe because of the whole choreography thing and and all that the fight the fighting didn't feel like the people were fighting together. Right, it felt oh, like they were all doing their separate things yeah. at the same time. Right. Yep. Whereas in this, they were definitely working together. They were definitely working together, and and they and because it's it's that idea of synergy between the characters, and that they understand each other, and how how to best you know make the other person be able to do an awesome. Right. Um, I just I love it, and, love it, it. and it was enjoyable. It was something that you know we we got to showcase uh, what Team Ruby and Juniper's um, mm -hmm. uh, new upgrades. Yep. Uh, basically are and what they could do there oh, were yeah. tons of really cool little things that were kind of shown in there just for mm -hmm. just for kind of the fun of it but hey if you're going to foreshadow and you know set up kind of future encounters and how the teams will mm -hmm. work and do things together let's have a little side mission that is oh, yeah. tied into the main plot mm -hmm. because this is a part of Iron Ironwood's plan and everything to get things moving they have right. a step-by-step -step process with this yeah, let's have them go and do a dungeon crawl with the special operatives that we just were introduced to in the previous episode. And and Brilliant. one other thing that I would say about this, I would say this kind of a thing, they needed to have something like this. Yeah. Not 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 just for the purpose of of introducing easily the Aesops and what they can do and and the new upgrades to Team Team Ruby and Team, you know Well Junior. Jun yeah. Yeah. Um Ranger. Right. But also because since they're establishing Atlas as the second beacon, we need to have some slice of life. We need to have some oh, just sort I see of what you're saying. daily, they go on adventures. It's not the fate of the world. Yep. You know, they're just having fun. And, you know, like we're real huntress, huntresses, right? Yeah. You know, like that's yeah. something that is very important, like yep. in and of itself. So, so I'm, ugh. 
I yeah. love I love this episode. I'm very glad that they decided to to have this in here. Yeah, I, I feel like this is very volume two. They're mm-hmm. taking yes. some of the things that I think was what made volume two one of my favorite volumes, mm-hmm. and bringing that into here, which is all right. Let's get introduced to Team Coffee, but better. No, no, no offense to Team Coffee, but this is basically what Team Coffee was always meant to be. Right, but actually it's, more you know well, showcased in a in a in a uh, in a uh, synergistic way because Team right. Coffee was more like, hey, you do a thing, you do a thing solo, uh-huh. you do a thing solo. Now yeah. we've got five, which is mm-hmm. one more than four, by the way, and then you get to see Brilliant. them all all working together. Well, it's just and, oh, and it's most so importantly, good. I would say it's something where, in the case of Coffee, it felt more like, uh, hey, here's a sort of a Powers. real cool moment because because maybe oh. you know just in case you didn't like the whole bit with the train or whatever right oh gotcha but, but the thing is is that it didn't have any purpose in the greater story it's just okay we're introducing these really cool badass characters right mm. and it was awesome i love that whole scene it's great right but the thing is is that with the aesops this is we're making an investment into the future of the show now, mm-hmm. the Aesops may, might only be around for a volume or two before they tragically die, and oh no, right? <laughs> but oh, Levi Squad, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah. they definitely have that vibe of, mm-hmm. we are professionals at what we do, and we are also invested enough into them to make mm-hmm. you care when they're not around. Right, and the fact that they're, and the yeah, fact forever. that they're, that they're basically at the very beginning, right? They're, mm-hmm. they're taking the time to establish these characters so that we can actually feel like we know them as people sure. and how they interact with the rest of the cast. That's good. Which is why they split them up mm-hmm. yep. and had them each give little interactions with all of them here. Oh, yeah. It's cool. We can tell that they were trying to make sure that they ticked off the boxes, so to speak, of letting them each have something to say that gave a little bit of their personality. Right. Something to say, something cool to do, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and and it felt it felt like they were they were effortlessly moving through that formula. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think formulaic in that response is a negative. I think right. in this case, because of how effortless it felt for things to move along pacing wise, I, I was just enthralled with the episode and it felt like it ended way too soon. I was yeah. like, What oh, yeah. what the heck? Oh, that it's was over just, already. That was just a blast and, and then it's like, okay. Ah, right, like so I, good. I feel like this is like if you have like a cook that's managing a bunch of different like like you know, pans of stuff, right? Sure. And they're all cooking. You don't want to make sure that anything burns, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to basically, well, burn out the audience by focusing right. too much on one thing in case that's maybe not what they're interested in, right? Sure. And you have all these things that you need to manage. So you just do a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and it's yep. and it's kind of manic, right? Like, yeah. like, I can imagine that this would be very tough on the writing team to figure, to fit all this stuff in because there's so much that they need to think about, right? Mm-hmm. So many different pieces. Like, e- like even the whole thing of Nora, you know, being like, I like the outfit, Ren. And then nothing. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, I think I think if we looked at Ren a little bit closer, what I saw in his eyes was a little bit of a, like, oh, uh, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think what might have happened in in Ren's mind is like, huh? Hey, wait. What does she mean? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we got to keep the mission. Yeah. Right. So so I think if anything, he had a. Nora, there's people around. Like we talked about. That. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, John's not people. <laughs> yeah. That was a good impression. That was pretty good. But but yeah, like like he 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 was he's not distant or cold or something like that. Right. He's just like his mind's not thinking about that. Yeah. At the, but it's at the but it's basically there. touching base with that element because yeah. because it's as, a little throwaway line that actually means something. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Because because as as great as it as it is to see Nora just like freaking out about oh we're gonna get new weapons or something or mm-hmm. or generally being like positive and stuff. Yeah. It's touching back on yes that. That, that whole development with with the two of them that volume we had four. in volume four right yeah. we're just sort of touching base with that right you know we haven't forgotten so it's right you know and and that yeah ugh, it is I very easy very much appreciate it's it. very easy i found because i suck at writing dialogue personally I, I cannot write dialogue it's so hard um to see people give the every person echoes a thing in a given mm-hmm. scene but uh-huh. you don't have to have everyone speaking in a given scene if it doesn't make sense for their character to say something here yeah you don't need to have anime does this a lot you just see the as expected of so and so you know uh-huh. just random stuff thrown in there to echo and remind them hey that person is there they're not just a static right. 2d image yeah in in this case there were a lot of times where you'd see characters talking and another character's in the background emoting in a reaction to sure. the oh Right, this dust mine. This is Ilya's parents' like 
place mm-hmm. where they died. Yeah. Like, oh god, that's mm-hmm. a that's a thing. And good catching that because I like mm-hmm. like I I had like the thought entered my head like oh yeah well Blake reacted but, so quickly to uh-huh. what was going on I was like oh right yeah yeah, yeah that's um, yeah and well and yeah. then also the other things like like they they defeat the the Geist right and then you know Crow and uh, what's his name um, uh, uh, Clover Clover yeah, of course Clover, of course yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Crow, Crow and Clover are you know are talking and stuff, and then everyone's kind of dancing in the background. And, yeah, yeah. And then the the the, the strong one, I'm guessing that's Elm. Is, that is Elm. That's is, Elm. Yeah. Is like carrying Ruby. Carrying on her Ruby shoulder. on her shoulder, yeah. and they're all like dancing yeah. and stuff. Like, like that's, that kind that's of stuff. adorable. It's, great. it's like, perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I think that this is an example though of what they can do this volume. Yeah. I don't think this is the like oh. you were saying the the top of the line. This is uh-huh. just. This is just a broad range in the middle, actually. I think they could actually go further <sighs> because what you could do uh-huh. with this is you take kind of this level, I would say, on the, the group size scale boss fight thing, mm-hmm. but you bring it down actually a little bit to the 1v1 fights that they'll kind of alternate between like they did uh-huh. in Volume 5. Sure. Well, or, that... or what they've teased in the OP, which mm-hmm. is a 2v1 mm-hmm. fight between yeah. Crow... Tyrion and new girl who's like an underground right. resistance movement. I think I, I get actually the feeling she was actually she's the leader. Well, no, I think I think we've actually heard her name before. Yeah, that was what um the the guy in the, the four, Yeah, 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 what, yeah what, uh-huh. what was his name? Yeah. Yeah. Right, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he was yeah. talking right, he was talking about her that or that's that's probably her. Yeah, that um, she was, you know, an Atlas Academy you right, know, right. graduate but then, you know, decided to not be going to the military. One of the, one of the things purposes. that I'm that I'm kind of curious about though mm-hmm. is that if you look at the cast they have here, now they handled their their giant cast perfectly here, right? Yeah, if anything like, at the end the boss fight you need to have Ruby and Juniper do anything really yep. because, like, hey, stand back. The specialists have got this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Well, well, but the but from a standpoint of fights, mm-hmm. right? With the villains, when I look at the number of named characters that we have in just in this episode <laughs> for our protagonists, <laughs> yeah, right? For the good guys, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And then when I look at like the number of bad guys in Atlas, it's uh-huh. like, all right, we got Tyrion, we got Watts, uh, and Cinder and Neo are on their way. on their way. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. So, well, well. Okay, we can we can we can pull back a little bit from the uh from the violence side of things and actually go into people that will be antagonistic. We have uh Schnee, you know. Ah uh, yes, uh, and little Shitley. That's, yes, this and is true. Shitley, yeah. This is true. Um, Papa and, well, Schnee. And well, and granted, since they're going to be spawn. starting a contained grim apocalypse, we can have a bunch of them just be fighting grim and and not need I to. Would, I like would expect I, I would, that. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. But, but and we when, can and we can double team and triple team like named, you know, villains, named villains essentially. For sure. Yeah. But like but like when I think about the named villains, double and triple team, sure. Right. But like you can't octuple team like you know. No, you could though. That, that would be really cool. That would be really hard like, to do like, though. No, think, think about this. Think about this. Mm-hmm. You don't have it octuple on one. You have uh-huh. it like twelve versus one. two or three. So it's a thing of where it's like, okay, if Cinder and Neo end up yeah. like exposing themselves, wouldn't it be cool to see Cinder basically be like, I am a goddess maiden. What are you all going to do to sure. me? And it's like, we have action economy, bitch. And yeah, then, well, they, then, well, they, right, then they right. just, then they just, and that's the thing because, because like in, in action movies, like, like, I don't know, like, uh, Kill Bill, for instance, right? Yes, you know, yes, great you know, example. Right? Yeah. You, you have her going and storming the place, and there's all these people. <laughs> but if you look at what she's doing, she's only ever interacting with two, maybe three people at a time. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll all be kind of like, you know, stuff. oh, do, do we go in? Do we fight? Whatever, right? Right. And that works because they're nameless characters, right? But, but the, yeah. Now, now this is animated, so they can do all kinds of things, and there's magic powers where they can, you know. There's magic powers. There's right. also Grim, where you could basically have it be a thing where all you need is cinder to basically be like all right i'm here and you know i made contact not only with uh you know sure. the characters there but maybe salem's you know sent some <laughs> you know grim with her or what yeah. have you and there's a part where cinder like literally commands them with her grim appendage or what have you to go and do sure. something and then it's a thing of where it's a boss fight with ads you know like MMO yeah, style, yeah, right, you know? and that's right, and that's and that's the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, because otherwise, how do you address the action economy? Now, gr- granted, with the visuals that they did this episode, mm-hmm. they showed that they were able to 
flawlessly handle a ridiculous number of people mm -hmm. in a combat environment and not have it be static, right? Not not have it be the the knuckle V where it's just standing in one place and everyone's circling around it, right? Yeah. Like like so so awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I still just I, I guess I won't like I won't be able to know until I see it what that course, would look like course. with this many characters. Yeah, like, I don't think in general they're mm -hmm. actually going to show that many characters at a time. You don't have yeah, to. Right, probably not. Because yeah. that's not even what they did here. Mm -hmm. We only yep. probably saw four characters moving on screen at the same time once right. in terms of the actual combat. Uh -huh. and that probably is closer to three. So so mm -hmm. if anything, it just you just cut between them and you just keep things consistent with regards to the locations right. and all that so we don't yeah, have kind of like the volume five, five fight. Well, well kind of how it did not go in the volume five fight. Volume five fight in the finale with the big open atrium area there was oh, yeah, an yeah. example of how not to do well, that. Right, right, the, right. Because you and would, I'm not worried about that here, given what we saw. Yes, in this part, right. Here. Have yeah. have more convincing reasons for the division of the fights, but still having the splitting up of of right different fights. But I'm also that. talking about consistency about them actually being where they're supposed to be in the fight. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. And not having dumb things like how Weiss fought against the um, the not maiden. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, but, anyways. Uh -huh. um, story, <laughs> story here. We've mm. got uh, an, an interesting uh, question. Ruby, you're doing this. Oh. And the rest of the team is actually on board with you. Yeah. And this is the thing I like about this, is that they're looking at it from the angle of, wait, we're going to support her decision. She is the team leader. Mm. And but we get why you did this. And we get why you did this, but let's let's process it a little bit. Yeah. And then and then I loved the well, what does Oscar think about this? Because you kind of made the choice for him. Yeah. Like that should be That's yes, true. a group decision, but it also should accept his input. Right. And Oscar's not okay with this. He gave the hey, you know, like the kind of the passive response mm -hmm. of like, hey, Ruby. I like, don't like confrontation, but like, well, like, mm -hmm. like, isn't this what Ozpin did to us? Like, yep. that's a great question. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. Yep. And I would say, yeah, it kind of <laughs> is. Like, oh, and definitely. That's, that's where they're going to see things from Ozpin's perspective a little yeah. bit is they'll go, oh, I get it now. Uh huh. Ozpin, you're one person. Right. You can't control people, but you can you direct can't... them via yep. what they know. Right. So you, you got to kind of play a bit of chess. Right. You definitely have to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But exactly. But you need to remember that these pieces are people. These pieces are people. Yeah. And uh, you need to value them as such. Right. Not in just how yeah. strong their piece is. Right. And we have seen moments in the past where Ozpin is cold because he's distant been, yeah. because i think mm -hmm. he's realizing that he needs to treat them like chess pieces in order to make sure right. that things because, go the way he needs them to because he probably tried many times with them as people and which gets it harder to treat them as people because he's done this so many times but oh, it's also we, probably less effective yeah we we know yeah we know mm -hmm. based on six three that uh yeah there was a or i think it might have been actually six four <laughs> the episode after the huge flashback where um well, the combination of the two, where he, you know people realizing, oh, you think that those, you know, that those people were the first that think that people right. like Leo were the first to betray him, basically uh -huh. to, oh yeah, get tired of, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. Oh boy, it, it's a really interesting thing to have this kind of one for all avatar lineage uh -huh. kind of repeating cycle of things for for Ozpin, but then since you realize that all the memories are actually, I would say perfectly maintained so it's not a thing where he has to consult his past lives avatar style that Ozpin's Ozpin's tired oh yeah Ozpin's a really yep. really messed up person probably internally not in terms of that he's a he's an evil person but he's probably pretty broken inside oh, in a lot of ways definitely yeah 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 and given that he hasn't shown up yet I think that we're due in about two episodes with him kind of talking to Oscar mm -hmm. and being like, yeah, yeah. You see that thing Ironwood did there? See that little bit of inconsistency there? That's something that is the reason why I don't like share all this stuff here. So maybe maybe Ruby was right. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but the, the, the big important thing this episode is that apparently um, we've got the maiden voyage of a new ship. 
because <laughs> because <laughs> yes like yes we do you, you don't you don't just you don't just set something like this up so pointedly without like basically like putting off fireworks and firing the cannon and stuff as as this ship sets oh, the sail to the great yeah, seas yeah the cannon was definitely fired the point i'm still trying to make though was that i don't really count this as a as a cannon like ship yet because crow has not reciprocated oh, yeah. definitely he is definitely. being flirted with and he is probably feeling flattered uh-huh. much like the waitress you know in volume sure. four i went ahead and gave you top yeah lucky yeah, yeah. you uh-huh. and he yeah. gave the whole like all right my semblance is good fortune lucky you and it's right, like right oh wow yeah well, well and smooth and, buddy well, well and let's be real here crow is also someone that's very tired mm-hmm. right so having someone around where he doesn't have to worry about himself right. anymore that has got to be a huge feeling of just respite and and yeah. just okay all right maybe i can actually stick around and it's going to be okay and and what's also cool is that while we definitely knew that crow's semblance was more passive mm-hmm. we i don't know if we've ever actually seen or heard him say that he actively tries to suppress it and it works Right. What we've heard him say is that it just causes misfortune around him. And I think that little bit of clarification in this, this episode is huge because what it means is that he can consciously make an effort to mitigate it, but it sometimes still mm-hmm. breaks out of his control. So what I, what I see as an example of that is that it's like a muscle. He can basically hold in like a, like a specific you know, feeling uh-huh. or what have you. And he's like, um, yeah. I'm flexing, I'm flexing, I'm holding it tight, but every once in a while, I, I, I let it go a little bit. Mm-hmm. If he has someone else out there that is actively trying to push it out, like giving good fortune, like he's uh-huh. actively using it in that respect, and it is passive, meaning that it's not going to ruin his aura or anything else like that. Mm-hmm. This guy is like a perfect leader. Oh, yeah. And, well, and, uh-huh. and it's, it should be stronger in a lot of ways than Crow's semblance. Like in terms of it not just overriding Crow's semblance in a lot of okay. areas, but actually giving a stronger um, thing there because he wouldn't be actively trying to suppress it. Whereas Crow is constantly uh, trying to do that. Sure. One of the things though that is a, and, and it could be that he's, so so he could be trying to pr- suppress it and he can do that with some modicum of success. Right. He's trying to suppress it and it doesn't actually help right but but he doesn't know whether it's happening or not so uh, right who knows right? right yeah and then there's he doesn't have any way to control it and he's not trying to control his semblance but he's trying to control his environment and how he interacts with his environment sure so that his semblance will trigger in the least damaging damaging ways, ways possible yeah so so for instance so being alone being alone yep. or or you know not walking on icy areas where people could <laughs> slip and break their neck or something, right. you know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And if it's and if it's that one, then that that uh, says a lot about basically Crow's psyche because that mm-hmm. that is an anxiety ridden mess. Oh yeah. Where it's because yeah. because you can't do that, right? Yeah. But he feels like he has to. Yeah. He has to try, and- right? And I want to bring up actually something that could be kind of cool mm-hmm. here. They bring up with with regards to crows. We've seen him flirt with ladies, and if now he's receiving you know you know stuff from from a guy as well, and he's like, oh, I kind of like this. You know, we have probably our you know our first bi character in in the show as well. I mean, unless unless Yang potentially is as well. But I think what's what's cool about that is if you think about Crow as being someone who's anxiety ridden, mm-hmm. someone who has constantly suppressed himself in a lot of ways. He's he's just looking for companionship. Oh yeah. He's just yeah. looking for someone he can trust in like his team but won't fail him like his team. Because if we think about what his team was is we had the champion. We had Summer Rose. Mm-hmm. And she's just the savior basically probably. Right. Like she was probably the gung-ho one to do all the things and what have you. Mm-hmm. Great. He has his sister who maybe is a little bit more of the suspicious type, and while maybe he connected in a lot of ways with her, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, they, they got along. They got along well probably before well before things fell apart. Yeah, right. She was though apparently the reason why things kind of fell apart, though. Which means that Tai Yang, in some ways, chose, uh, kind of, to abandon Crow in that regard because of the efforts of Raven. 
rather than sticking with his so i feel like crow is that last holdout character maybe he believed yeah. in the team longer than anyone else is what i'm what i'm bringing up like it's something that i think i've theorized in the past was uh -huh. that if you imagined them all leaving crow was the one that never left that's why he still works with ozpin sure. directly like constantly there yeah and while he might be doing it as like an atonement i want to make things better I would see that as a character that would desperately want to have his team back, but knows he can never have it. Right. So when he's presented with the opportunity of someone being like, hey, yeah. partner, hey, you know? Yeah. He's like, oh my God, nah, oh, right. uh, don't don't push back, don't do anything, because, just process, how do I do, I don't know what to do, okay, yeah. okay. And, and it'll be interesting to see how they go into that, because, mm -hmm. because with Crow, I, I feel like it's something where he, he very much believes in his team, but it's also that he doesn't believe in himself. Yeah. Right? Yep. Which is, which is understandable. In so his, he projects in that out and doesn't believe in others. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Right. Um, and so so if he's ever put into a situation where suddenly he doesn't have to worry about that, right? Mm -hmm. His his problems, shall we say, the stuff that he brings to his t to the table, his bad luck charm. Yeah. Um is not causing, you know, a bunch of craziness to to, you know, negatively affect the people around him. We might get to see a whole new side of Crow. Yeah. Like, a whole new side of him, which yeah. I'm excited to see. Yeah. And if he's still being built up as a main character in the mm -hmm. grand scheme of things, then uh, mm, that means oh. that, you know, he's still on the potential chopping, chopping block. block. Yeah. 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 But I, I'm going to be looking at more so how we kind of build the overall larger cast of protagonists because we are pretty much confirmed i believe at this point that the atlas arc will last more than this volume at least i believe that was confirmed through uh through uh stuff at rtx and uh right i would, I would like be that. surprised if it only lasted this long I would, right i would be very I think surprised i think it's more the question of whether or not it's gonna last two or three volumes actually. right yeah yeah because because there's no way they're gonna end it in one volume like uh yeah they're, they're doing they're doing too much build up and it's a build up that i love because because it that's how they can get us back to the feeling of this is beacon beacon you know? yeah um yeah i agree yeah um uh this felt very side missiony mm -hmm. but it but was tied into excellent. the main plot yep um we have our characters prepped and ready to go for whatever comes next mm -hmm. um there was you know a lot of ways in which this mission could have gone wrong but uh -huh. in a lot of ways we got to see how they you know just worked yep. together and complemented each other and i will say jean's hair does look better when he's actually fighting ah uh, yes you know like yeah, like, like right? in the episode versus in the op mm -hmm. the hair did look a lot better like when he was in motion uh, and things like that yeah i agree and when it's static it does look a little bit like oh jarring yeah but what i do like about it is that when they showed him looking at his bangs and realizing they were like down to here uh-huh it's that thing of practicality as well sure he wants to be a responsible leader so he yeah. goes oh i hmm. should you know you know i should take things a little bit more seriously well and also i wouldn't be surprised if it was something if if in a way especially since <laughs> jean has been the princess in distress more than like any other character in ruby sure um I mean that has that's been gone for a while. No, no, that's been, well, right, exactly. Right, right. That's been gone for a while. Oh, so he cuts his hair because he's no longer because he's even, he's moving that, on. That reflects right? nothing of who he is right now. Exactly, that's a yeah. great point. And that's yeah. why that's why I love that they had him that they they had him uh, with the with the scrap of 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 Pira's, you know yeah. cloth, right? Yeah, and then he goes and you know mm -hmm. touches the hair because it's the I'm a different person now. I'm a different person now, and I'm able to move on. Right. There's a positive aspect of this if you think about it from like a professional standpoint. If you have someone that finally realizes they're going to be put into a job situation where they need to look like presentable and stuff like that, cutting the hair and getting that kind of professional cut mm -hmm. is an example of like, oh right. yeah, yeah, I'm taking myself seriously. I Not don't know just if I would call this. it a professional cut, but you know. <laughs> I would say it actually is. There's there's nothing about it that looks excessive. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would say if anything, that's an example of where Ren has, you know, kind of his own <laughs> constant issues, whereas he's never gonna cut his hair in that regard because no. not only is it not his way, but also who would possibly who like who would cut their hair when they have hair like Ren? So like, right, but Ren doesn't have to be put into that front position of leadership. 
Uh, yes, that is true. It's something where he can be in the background supporting them. Which, by the way, everyone's weapon upgrades were awesome. Yep. We got to see some really cool things there. We got to see also a speed semblance person talk to Ruby about uh -huh. how her semblance isn't That's speed. Not just speed. And I've been saying this forever yeah, now. It's, it's like, like y'all, it's okay to not have all the powers be defined. It's cooler that way because then we get to go and just take the visual cues and run right. with it. Yep. And and it also it also, you know, builds up the whole idea of like some of the things that we've seen Ruby do in some of the earliest volumes mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, yes, speed. Sure. She is fast when doing the thing. She is yes. fast when doing the thing, yeah. but what she is doing is not just speed. Right. Like it's yeah. 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 So Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's exciting. Indeed. Um, uh, Tyrion has now killed our, uh, our 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 protester buddy. I mean, he might not have killed him. I think his name was Forrest. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I, I don't. I don't remember. But uh, <laughs> I mean, he could have been like, "I'm going to get some information out of you before I kill you." <laughs> you know, maybe. But my question is: Is what is Tyrion doing? Is he sowing chaos? Uh, is he recruiting people? Like, if I assume he's not Daddy recruiting people. To, Daddy needs to express some rage. I think like, I think what he's doing, if anything, mm -hmm. is he's just blowing off steam, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, he wants to upset things and what have you. But... But, okay, you kill a civilian. Killing the forest, the, the annoying protester that throws bricks at, you know, Atlas, you know, vehicles, that's not gonna do much like, like in, in many to... ways it's funny because he's there with watts and they're just antithetical to each other right oh, because completely. watts is all about like doing all this crazy stuff right whereas Tyrion, he's a great fighter no he's he just crazy he's, he's, but he's just crazy and it's like what is he doing here potentially literally like nothing right well for now for now yeah. for now yes for now. but there could be more to this who knows who knows who knows um, we have, uh, Pietro Palandina being the mm -hmm. one that actually makes the upgrades and stuff. Yep. But he also teased that there were things with their fighting styles uh -huh. based on studying the, uh, the vital, uh, festival tournament and all that. <laughs> Did you almost say vital knowledge? Yeah, 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 yeah. maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I was thinking that too. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> because of that, he's got some, like, some input that he wants to save for later. Which, what do you think that is? So because I, I don't know this that that could be just basically them giving a bit of foreshadowing for there will continue to be upgrades. And we're saying it now because it makes sense uh -huh. to say that that is a thing that's going to happen now since it's mm -hmm. going to be the same people making them. So it's right. not that they're just suddenly changing their minds or being like, oh, this would be even better. You know, they're like, right. I got some ideas. Let's let's, you know, work yeah. through it or whatever. Uh -huh. um, as for what specifically, I don't know. I, I have you got an some idea. ideas? I have an idea. Yeah. So when you look at the way they fight and what have you, yeah. they're, you know, just using their weapons and mm -hmm. their semblances, right? Yep. So it's something where they upgrade the weapons and their mm -hmm. armaments in the base level there. How do you interact with the semblance, though? I mean, you make items that are more suited to that semblance. But we've seen multiple times in Ruby items that are specifically not not connected to yes. semblances, but items mm. that are yeah. like basically the equivalent of magic items where they are attuned uh -huh. in some ways to the aura of the person. Therefore, the semblance oh, works with them oh, in ways that are ridiculously cool to the point where people were confused for like five volumes how Adam's powers worked. I'm sorry, I'm shouting at the dumber parts of the fandom, but well, anyway. Well, also, 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 we can finally get our true wish. Yes. The thing that always needed to happen. Yes. Ever since they introduced Drills. weapons. Drills. No. Okay. No. Magnets. Car batteries in a backpack on Nora. Oh my god. Like, oh it's literally god. one of those things where it's like, why haven't they done this yet? Why you haven't know? we been just... Shocking like, Nora. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Level. She just needs she to just, have a taser. Uh, that she's just like, all she's right. constantly flexing all the muscles because yeah. she's getting a, a shock every like 0.5 seconds. Right. Like, <laughs> heck, they wouldn't even need it, like, you know, land based vehicles at that point. Just hook up the battery to Nora. She can carry the vehicle for them. Like, like, you know. Okay. Yes. 
Definitely. I mean, I'm just saying, maybe it's too silly or it's too okay. busted if they just say that she has that all the time, uh-huh. which is probably what it is. But that's like one of those one of those mm-hmm. things that I would love the, to see. The other one is something that is more based on something that you would find very interesting in... Armor? Uh, well, no, but but close. Sniper? What did Harriet have in this episode? Oh, cybernetic upgrades cybernetic enhancements yeah yeah what if it's not about armor but it's about or yeah (laughs) or you know like with yang's cybernetic arm it's about like actually enhancing certain things there with regards to the items being more connected yeah to them and then via cybernetic enhancements and they can have it theoretically be for the whole body at that point and then it might be a bit too complicated so they can make ai that will help run the suits for them (laughs) <laughs> hold on a second this sounds familiar uh well well i'm just thinking about Take him to the extreme I've, yeah, that's yeah joke, i've but... constantly <laughs> been wondering when this show is going to go full gurren lagan because that was the that <laughs> was a lot of the inspiration mech. with monty like yeah, being his yeah. favorite show uh-huh and in a lot of ways this hinting foreshadowing with ruby semblance is one of the things where i go oh right because if you think about Ruby's semblance, in some ways you could say that she is transforming herself into rose petals. Mm-hmm. But I think they're definitely going to bring up the fact that this is uh, this is more of a... This is not a thing of where it's just something obvious where we're looking at it here, but it's something also a little bit ridiculous involved with it as well. Not some star platinum super speed is actually, you know, uh-huh. this. It's where she is slightly folding space. She is able to manipulate her form in some kind of maybe right. pocket dimension where she shifts out of reality yeah, and she just whatever right because right. because she when she's going all super fast i don't know if we've ever have we seen her actually take damage while she's traveling in that way no i don't think we have no it's only like once she once she transforms yeah. out of it yeah. right right which might be something where if she runs into something then she's forced to stop well, and then well, you know we've seen her run into things like that and she's literally split into multiple projectiles or she's just turned into the roses and then reformed around yeah yeah it yeah it's, going. it's it's some just some crazy it's stuff just some right crazy there. stuff yeah yeah and i would um, love to see semblance evolution Yes, at definitely. some point, definitely, because that's another thing that's been teased in, mm-hmm. in the future, and it's yeah. the way that we power up our protagonists in order to be able to face yep. stronger challenges exactly. as we constantly yeah. escalate the types mm-hmm. of dangers that they deal with in classic RPG fashion. Also, uh, you know, we, we got to point out that Blake uh, repaired her her blade with a little bit of gold. A little bit of gold. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, we had uh, we had some bees. We had some bees in, uh, in in a moment where Yang L- acknowledged Yang acknowledged the, uh, the, the 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 bob cut, which mm-hmm. is the the. I mean, it's a it's a great cut. It's a great like, cut. Yes. Like as far as as far as hair differences, I would say, well, okay, hair differences. Yang's hair doesn't change because nope, her because hair you is don't touch the her. way it is. You, you don't, don't touch don't, her hair. You don't touch her hair. Yep. Weiss's hair is probably the only thing that I'm not a fan of from her design change because her design change in general is my favorite, other than just how her hair, hair gets so Rapunzel big. But um, uh, or like Elsa specifically. Right, right, of, yeah, yeah. You know, um, green. but uh, the but and Ruby's hair is great. I love I love the new look for Ruby's hair. I, I agree. Awesome. Yeah. Blake's hair, I'm a big fan of because yeah. I feel like I feel like in Ruby there were too many characters that just had really long hair. You know, uh-huh. like just they all have long hair. Oh, except for Ruby, you know. Well, Nora. Um, I mean, oh, yeah, Nora. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And Penny. And yeah. Nora has been like Not your favorite female character in the show. Like, I mean, like until well, Weiss just became like it was it was mainly like once I listened to the song Boop and watched the Uptown Funk and the but. OK. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, all the stuff we got with the characters this episode was just really good. Yeah. And uh, we've got a lot to look forward to. We do got indeed. our. We've got our, our, our crew in the Aesops here, mm-hmm. and we are taking things on a more kind of slow, systematic approach with regards to the story progressing towards yeah. um, the building of the new mm-hmm. uh, vital Amity Arena kind of thing. Right, satellite. Satellite, um, yeah. I really appreciate that we haven't gotten much from the villains so far. Mm. Because one of the things, I'm only kind of realizing it now, but in in like the, the previous volumes, they made sure that like, every ep- like couple episodes at least they gave us a status update on the villains right. the thing is that one because the villains are so spread out they 
they have they have only been doing that for like Watts and Tyrion, right? Totally get it because they're in the same area. Yeah, they right did now. it a little bit for Emerald and Mercury, right? But the thing but... is that now that I think about it, that basically sets this this idea in my mind, pacing wise, that this is going to be a short story. Oh, right. Sure. That this story here is going to be short, whether you know with wherever location we're at or or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas since they're going to be in Atlas for a while, they can now take the time with the villains. They don't need to update us on the villains all the time because yep. they're the villains. They're not the protagonists of this story. Right. Right. And and I just I really appreciate that. And I didn't realize how big of an effect that could have until you know we've now seen it here. So. Yeah. So there we go, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to see the next one, uh, I would say probably within about 24 hours of when this one gets posted up onto uh, YouTube Public and what have you there. We're going to put up a timer-based version of this so you can sync it up with your Rooster Teeth first service there. Be sure to support the, mm -hmm. uh, the creators here. They're awesome, and they put up amazing stuff. Amazing like content. So uh, be sure to uh, do that. But uh, links to that are in the description below for our Patreon. Any level of support gets you access to our Discord also, where you can be a part of the community where we chat about not just ruby specifically but anime in general stories in general uh also specifically like the book that jacob wrote recently. yes that's right really awesome. my story it's a sci-fi novel called battle lines mm -hmm. it's amazing it's available in hardcover and ebook on amazon links in the description go check it out yeah so if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time